So you're thinking of moving to Toronto? Well, the nice thing is that you have plenty of neighborhoods to choose from, each with their own personality and vibe, but with so many options, where do you even begin? Well, stay tuned because I'm about to drop the most popular areas in the city that people are moving to, including a neighborhood that was rated by Vogue magazine as the second coolest neighborhood in the world. So make sure to stick around to find out which one that is. These are your top seven rated neighborhoods to move to in Toronto, Ontario. first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Toronto then welcome my name is Rochelle and I've been a real estate agent here in Toronto for the last seven years helping people just like you make the move to Toronto Canada and I love it so if you're looking to move whether it's in nine days or 90 days and I would love to hear from you give me a shout all of my contact is in the description below but for now the best way to give you a better understanding of these neighborhoods is to actually show you where they are on Google Maps so let's hop into my computer and I will show you around. So welcome to Toronto. If you don't already know, then let me tell you that this city is huge. If we're looking at the entire greater Toronto area, that is made up of the city of Toronto itself, plus all of these surrounding suburbs. But today I'm just going to focus on Toronto proper here within these red borders. If you are interested in other popular suburbs that may be more affordable or family oriented, then make sure to go through my channel. I do have tons of videos like this, this, and this that walk you through those. But for now, I'm just gonna zone in on the city of Toronto itself. And I'm gonna start off on the east end to the first neighborhood on our top seven list, which is the neighborhood of the beaches. Now, normally when you think of Toronto, the first thing that comes to mind is not a beach, but that's what makes this neighborhood so popular is that it is one of the only few beaches in the city. And so in the warmer months, this place does get very, very busy. Aside from the beach itself, which sits along the shores of Lake Ontario here, this entire water um, body of water, but the beaches is known for three things, which is the boardwalk, which is a three kilometer stretch along the beach and then all of the shops, bars, and restaurants along Queen Street, which are fun, colorful, and eclectic. And then the housing, because the Beaches neighborhood has the widest variety of architectural styles out of any other neighborhood in Toronto, together these three things make for a chill, vibrant lakeside vibe that thousands of Torontonians and tourists flock to to get some sun, hang out, and just have a good time. Now, Let's travel a little further down west here to Riverdale. Now, Riverdale is best known for being home to Greek Town and East Chinatown. So Greek Town is actually commonly referred to as the Danforth. People usually use these two names synonymously because the Danforth this street, just east of Broadview, which is over here, this is the heart of Greek um, of the Greek community. So there are tons of Greek restaurants. If you want to add some souvlaki, moussaka, tzatziki to your life, then the Danforth is where you want to be. And then East Chinatown, which is just right over here. This, by the way, is not the main Chinatown of Toronto. That Chinatown is part of downtown, but this Chinatown that I'm talking about, part of the east side of the city, is known for having some of the best Chinese food with a good stretch of bakeries, grocery stands, and eateries from other cuisines. But people love this neighborhood because, not just because of its cuisine, but you are close to major highways and roads. For example, you can see the DVP here, Lake Shores here, and the Gardener making commuting in and out of the city a breeze. Now, I am going to continue making my way downtown, but before that, there is another very popular part of Midtown Toronto, just up here to the area of Davisville Village. This part of town appeals to a lot of people, singles, families, couples without kids. 
Mount Pleasant West, for example, this is primarily residential, this whole area. You'll see a lot of people walking their dogs, hanging out at the park, but you're surrounded by all these commercial strips like this one offering, you can see here, Yawarat Vegan Thai, The Starving Artist, Piano Piano, and then all these other trendy artisanal shops. And then if I just move on over here to Young and Eglinton, or Young and Egg for short, this is a very happening part of town. It is hustling and bustling with tons of shopping and dining, everything from tacos to ramen to jerk chicken. But what really draws people, aside from the activity, is the good mix of housing available. You can rent a studio on top of a storefront along Young Street, for example. I used to stay this cute little place on top of the Allstate Insurance store where I would sleep on the rooftop and wake up to billboards and the sun just blazing on your face. It was such a nice setting. You've also got plenty of high-rise condos where you've got great views of all the action and activity. And then down here, along, let me zoom out, along Young, oops, Young and St. Clair, you'll find larger, more upscale homes with an affluent address. But basically you've got tons of housing options to choose from, all part of a lively, busy part of town. Now let's head on over back downtown, closer to the west end, to the west side actually, because here you'll find a lot of very popular neighborhoods and probably one of the most popular ones is here, Kensington Market. If I could sum up Kensington Market in three words, it would be hipster, artsy, and eclectic. It's honestly one of Toronto's most unique and iconic neighborhoods because of its color and community feel, and altogether has this boho, vintage, indie vibes where you've got all of these trendy bars, specialty grocers, bookstores, record stores, thrift shops. The houses here are fun too. You've got a lot of Victorian style homes and so they have that old word, world charm, but you've got market stalls right on their front doorstep, which really puts them in the center of all the modern day action. And the people that live here actually come from all different um, backgrounds. Kensington Market is one of the most culturally diverse areas in all of Toronto. But I wanna show you another fun neighborhood, which is right over here, West Queen West, and even Trinity Bellwood. So West Queen West is this neighborhood that Vogue magazine ranked as the second coolest neighborhood in the world. So everywhere from Tokyo to Mexico City, this Toronto neighborhood just outranked them all because all along Queen Street here, the street is completely lined with everything from offbeat street fashion shops to boutique stores and well everything in between it's just got style and then just up here you've also got trinity bellwoods which has everything from art galleries to hole in the wall coffee shops housing is fun here too you know you've got a lot of century homes close to all this shopping art and design studios live music venues anything that speaks to your creative interests you can basically find here but graffiti alley here when we're talking back down on queen street this is basically the greatest free art exhibit in town it's a laneway that stretches several blocks long and makes for the perfect backdrop for urban photography or instagram selfies um, and the art is always changing here too. So if you're lucky, you might be able to catch some of the local graffiti artists in action. It's all legal and encouraged here, by the way. And then further down here, the Drake Hotel. This is an iconic landmark and the Gladstone Hotel too, actually right next door that fuse art and hospitality. But I do want to mention that the Drake Hotel that has nothing to do with Drake the rapper. Um, he does still have one of his mansions here on Bridal Path, which is home to some of Canada's wealthiest residents. And he did grow up here as well, but just don't get them mixed up. And uh, yes, I did. Don't get a hotel and a person mixed up. <laughs> Okay, so next on our top seven list, not too further down west, 
is this neighborhood here that nobody knows how to pronounce. Ask half of the locals and they'll call it Ronces Vales. The other half will argue that the last S is silent, Ronces Vale. But I think everyone can agree that the easiest thing to call it is Ronce. That's a name that goes by by most of the community. And so that's just a quick tip for you. If you do want to make your way here and blend in with the locals, then you would call it Ronce. But this neighborhood culturally is known as the center of Toronto's Polish community with tons of Polish businesses and shops lining Roncesvalles Avenue. This street also hosts the largest Polish festival in North America. And so all in all, it's this nice European small town feel with warm and inviting people. You're also right next to High Park. High Park is not only Toronto's biggest park, but at 400 acres, it's also one of the largest parks in North America. It's often compared to New York Central Park. It's got a zoo, hiking trails, beautiful gardens, a public pool, sports facilities. Um, you can see here it's waterfront as well. And so very scenic and overall just a great place to spend an afternoon. And then last but not least on our top seven list, is the junction this is a hip eclectic neighborhood where it's main street dundas west here is alive with businesses bars independent food stores you can see bunners bake shop leela indian food bar but if you just move actually up here to st Clair west you get more of a suburban feel where you've got these big box stores like the Home Depot, Staples, and then just up here you've got the Stockyards Shopping Mall, which has Winners, Home Sense, and then everything outside of that and in between you've got all of these beautiful brick century homes, tree-lined streets with people from all backgrounds, young families, urban professionals. So the junction is perfect for people who just want to be part of the action but not where it's too live and loudly, uh, loud and lively. It's just a nice happy medium between the city and suburbia. But so there you have it. Where you live in Toronto really just depends on your taste and lifestyle. I only rhymed off the top seven neighborhoods here, but there are tons of other neighborhoods here that could likely suit your preferences and budget as well. It's just a matter of narrowing it down to the best fit for you. That said, if you are considering moving to Toronto, then give me a call. I would love to help you out. I'll help give you um, a better picture and own in on neighborhoods that best suit your needs and work with you to help you get a home in that neighborhood. So give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or even schedule a Zoom call all down in the description below. And I'd be happy to help you make that smooth move to Toronto. In the meantime, check out this video that rhymes off all the pros and cons of actually living in Toronto. It's a video I did that speaks to the good and the bad of living here. Everything from house prices to traffic to ethnic diversity and job opportunities. This video hits all of that and more so that you get a full picture of what it's actually like to live here. So you don't want to miss that. And if you did learn anything from this video, then please subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I drop a new video. You get everything that you need to know about living in Toronto and the surrounding greater Toronto area. Until then, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you guys around town. Stay safe and until the next video, bye-bye for now.